Okay, we're back. This is theCUBE, SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage of Dell Storage Forum. We're here live in Boston. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and I'm here with my co-host, Stu Miniman. And Stu, um, we've seen a lot of, today is really day zero of the Dell Storage Forum. Uh, Dell's got a number of announcements, I guess, coming this evening. Yeah, absolutely. At, at 4.30, we're going to hear about redacted and redacted. Okay. So. <laughs> Great, yeah, so the big There's keynote. There's been some buzz about convergence and some of the other things going on. The big on. keynote is tonight, right? Um, and then we've got Darren Thomas tomorrow morning, um, and then he's going to be in theCUBE. But we've heard a lot about end-to-end, -end, um, and a, a lot of hints about converged infrastructure. I suspect that some of the announcements are going to be around that, but what do you make of the day? Yeah, uh, so good day. For some, some good guests digging into really explaining, as we've talked about, the transformation of Dell. So Dell's not only made a lot of acquisitions, but as, as you pointed out, Dave, they're doing a good job of integrating, and it's not just about having the building blocks, but you know all the things we've been looking at um, where we, we think it, that where the market needs to go. So specifically talking about you know workload aware storage. So not just making something that works for a virtual machine, but something that really understands that application, can automate, get data to the right place, have the right I.O. profile. As David Floyer always uh, says on the Wikibon site, we need to have an I.O. centric model, um, not just something that you know moves from you know one tier to the other. So we really need to understand that. Um, strong messaging on virtualization with VMware and Microsoft. Microsoft, uh, and uh, you know, Dell's not just a Texas company anymore. They've got the big group in Minnesota. Dario came on and talked about where they're growing in Silicon Valley. Um, so you know, they're right in the, the the kind of the heart of the networking and innovation groups there. Um, you know, cloud, <laughs> convergence, networking, uh, kind of pulling it all together. And so the man who really runs that whole initiative, Brad Anderson, is speaking tonight. I believe it's at 5.30. Yeah, 4.30, uh, 4 4.30, okay, 4.30 East Coast time. We will be broadcasting that uh, tonight. So he's essentially Dave Donatelli's counterpart for Dell, right? right. Runs server storage and networking, and uh, has uh, essentially you know, responsibility for that whole converged strategy. Right. Yeah, so, um, so we've got that. Uh, we also have a replay uh, of last year. One of our best guests was uh, Phil Soren, the CEO of Compellent. We're going to be, we'll be showing you that from the uh, Dell Storage Forum 2011 uh, with uh, John MacArthur and yeah, Kelly yeah, Lewis. So, so an interesting thing even, you know, we talk about like Flash. You know, Bob Fine at the end kind of showed a little leg uh, telling about that that RNA uh, networks acquisition, can, that can help be the underlying piece to help get Dell to that all Flash array when they really feel that that's necessary. Well, it was interesting to me to have, we just had Com uh, Commvault on. Now, Commvault is a company that I've been sort of passively tracking for years. They do a lot in backup and archive and and um, they've got a very rich set of capabilities. Um, and what's happening, Stu, is, as I said, the, the moves in the chessboard are, are, to me, quite interesting. You have a company in, in EMC that owns a lot of its own software destiny. You know, you used to work there. You know how EMC sells hardware and then sells software and sells services behind it. They sell storage like bananas. They sell things in bunches. And that's a playbook that's really worked well for the company. And I think you're seeing others now finally come around to do that. Certainly HP and IBM. Yeah, and, and, and what I heard from Dario today, you know, John Furrier's in the Valley watching these venture companies. I didn't know that Dell had a Dell Ventures group there. And they've got that whole group in Silicon Valley there. So expect yeah, Dell to be new spreading initiative. some money out there. And these guys have to do it. They, 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 I've said it, a, if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. The enterprise business has become an oligopoly and you've got five or six or seven companies that really own the chessboard. I mean, it's, you know, you can name them. It's IBM, it's HP, it's, it's, it's Dell is certainly in there, um, um, uh, Microsoft, Cisco, uh, and I would put EMC in there because of VMware. They're like the little of the bigs, and they're, and they're clearly on a growth trajectory to do that. So any move that any, in Oracle, if I didn't say them, any move that any one of these vendors makes ripples through and affects the others. I mean, imagine, so you saw what happened when Dell made an offer for 3PAR. HP had to come out and counter. It's like, Stu, you're a football fan, it's like in the draft when somebody picks a left guard and there's not a lot of left guards left, boom, there's a run on left guard. You saw that with the storage virtualization companies. The question we have is, will you see that with Flash? Will the extreme IO acquisition you know, create a spate, a, 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 a ripple effect, a domino effect, and a spate of ap, uh, acquisitions around Flash? I think it will. Um, obviously, Dell has made some moves there with, with RNA. But um, I think there's more to come. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, um, so we're here, this is uh, the, the Cube, and we're here live at the Dell Storage Forum. Uh, we're hearing about the transformation of Dell. 
five, six, seven years ago, Dell essentially just put together other people's parts. You know, they still do that, obviously, for their, their desktop and laptop business. You know, reselling largely Microsoft and, and Intel technologies, but they've really been on a tear lately to acquire companies with um, significant IP. In particular, uh, storage has been a major area of, of focus. Uh, we heard that from uh, one of our guests that it used to be storage was you know the last thing they talk about. They talk about storage if they had time, right? And uh, now storage is the first thing that they talk yeah, about at the I meetings mean, with Michael Dell. You know, VDI is big. We've got Wise now part of the portfolio. You've got sc uh, the Scalant piece. You've got Boomi on the cloud side. So just you know, more and more acquisitions. You know, the last four years, Dell's done that. And as you, we pointed out at the beginning of the show, Dave. You know, Dell's still got you know a sizable war chest that they've built up over the years from their server and desktop business. Uh, they've got more money than IBM has in the bank. They've got more money than EMC or NetApp. So you know, not just a storage company. We're here talking about storage, but broad portfolio across the entire infrastructure and, and starting to build some of the software pieces to make them more strategic. So Stu, big day today, obviously, you know, gearing up for the Apple Worldwide Developers uh, Conference. It's always uh, uh, a, an event that people look forward to because basically Tim Cook and Apple are going to you know, show, you mentioned show some leg, they're going to show some leg, talk about new operating systems, new devices you know, hint at the, well they probably won't hint at it, but you know, new iPhone coming, I guess, December time frame. Um, but, but today, evidently, Apple is adding features back into Siri that the app had before Apple acquired the company. Mark Hopkins tells me that he was a uh, party to a personal demo from Siri prior to the acqu acquisition that had a new movie functionality in it. Um, that was about a year before the acquisition. Siri buttons are now becoming available in high-end high cars like uh, BMWs. And uh, we're also hearing of a massive upgrade to the MacBook Pro, which was announced earlier uh, this hour. And uh, along with that, as we expected, a massive price hike. So, <laughs> Apple focusing still on margins. Um, uh, let's see, MVP ships today, iOS 6 update is coming soon as well. So I'm excited about uh, Siri, Mark. I'm hoping that, that Siri actually can get some utility in it. You know, remember, Mark, we were at Oracle Open World and I was really questioning, you know, uh, the whole voice activation. You said you had some early demos of it. This is Mark Hopkins of SiliconANGLE. You were quite impressed with it at the time. Unfortunately, Apple didn't deliver on what impressed you because, you know, Siri is, as we all know, anybody who uses an iPhone 4S is quite useless. Um, I, I guess unless you're a famous actor and you want to do a TV commercial yeah. and have somebody and, to talk and, to. If absolutely. you're really lonely, Siri's good. Um, <laughs> to have, some, have a companion to talk to, otherwise it's really not that, uh, not that yeah. useful. And, and the other big show with Apple, you know, the forgotten company uh, from technology is Microsoft. So you know, expect to see a lot from Microsoft on the cloud aspect, so you know, where is Azure these days? We've got Scott Lowe on the ground, hoping to bring him into our broadcast. Uh, uh, over tech the next two days. Tech Ed, thank you. Yeah, um, so I'm excited about that. And, and I, again, I'm personally very excited about Siri gaining some utility, because that technology, that voice activation technology, to the extent that you can talk to computers like Spock did um, uh, you know, on Star Trek, you know, which is going to happen, because everything on Star Trek actually eventually happens. So, um, Okay, so we are um, live here at the Dell Storage Forum. We've got a good lineup tomorrow, Stu. I mean, you know, Darren Thomas is a great guest. He's the Vice President and General Manager of the, the Dell Storage Group. Um, He's going to give a keynote tomorrow morning. Uh, as I said, uh, we've got the big keynote tonight from Brad Anderson. Uh, I think he's pretty much doing a drive-by. Michael Dell is not at this event. No. He was at last year's inaugural Dell Storage Forum. Um, but I think, you know, hey, he's a busy guy, he's doing a lot of things, and, and I think the storage group is now sort of solidified. Yeah. He wanted to show and his and presence And the other thing, we got a lot of Dell executives on today, we're going to have some customers. So we've got real end users, we've, we've also got some influencers, a lot of them that are very familiar in using the Dell technology for many years. Some of them channel partners, some of them also end users. Uh, so two more days, lots of good guests, and... Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting, I just got another note from uh, Mark Hopkins saying that, that Apple announced a Google Docs-like uh, function, uh, uh, synced, synced with iCloud. Now here we have a situation where uh, David Girard left Google. He was the head of their enterprise apps group. Um, we, you know, obviously Stu, you know, we use Google Apps extensively. There's, there's good, there's bad, and there's ugly. But essentially now you have Apple and Google and Microsoft now all competing with each other for the enterprise. And uh, I for one welcome it. 
Uh, I think it's made Microsoft better. I think Microsoft has actually done a very good job of maintaining its franchise and, and responding to the cloud. Um, nobody's, nobody's really still been able to unseat Microsoft, even though a lot of people predicted it you know, with the web, with the cloud, you know, Microsoft is still top dog. So now maybe with Apple and Google, maybe that will foster some new competition and uh, you know, put some pressure on Microsoft who always has responded, you know, back since Netscape in days. So we're here live, uh, Dell Storage Forum 2012. Um, talking about the transformation, Stu, we're on the summer tour. We got a lot going on this week. Um, we're here at Dell. Uh, we'll be at Intel Forecast uh, tomorrow as part of the Cloud Expo. And then the big event toward the end of the week is the Hadoop Summit, which is uh, sponsored by Hortonworks. Uh, the Cube will be there. Uh, we've got a big team going out there. It's big data. It's all the action out in uh, San Jose. But we're here at the Dell Storage Forum talking about the transformation of Dell. Uh, Dell bringing in its own IP. We heard from Dell earlier today saying, hey, it's not about us expanding our margins. Uh, it's really about you know, driving the customer need. Um, yeah, that's probably true, but it's also about expanding the margins. I mean, I think there's no question about it that Dell, it's been the viability of Dell depended upon the company going on this acquisition spree and increasing the intellectual property that it owns. And um, as overseen by Michael Dell, he got very much heavily back involved in the business and uh, very impressive. We saw, Stu, in the old days, back in the day you saw a company like Data General who had a bunch of cash and a bunch of real estate assets, Data General didn't know what to do. It just didn't know how to buy the companies or invent things. It just didn't know how to pivot. Michael Dell has orchestrated a massive, giant, $60 billion pivot for Dell. Um, will it work? Well, I mean, Dell is relevant. Dell is in the conversation. Dell's making moves that are really keeping it relevant, in my opinion. What's your thoughts, and particularly on the networking side? Yeah, no, Dave, you know, as we talked, they've, they've made a lot of moves. It's, it's a lot of hard work to become relevant. You know, networking, they're, they're hitting things at the right time, so virtualization changed a lot of, uh, on, on the storage side, and that gave the opportunity for the Equalogics and Compellents to kind of come in there um, and, and gain market share. In networking, we're also at a pivot point. The, the, the combination of virtualization and big data are going to have massive scale-out architectures which have different requirements requirements than what uh, we had in the past. And as we talked about actually with the Broadcom guest today, uh, those actually intersect. So while on the storage side, I need a different architecture for something like Hadoop uh, than I did traditionally for VMware. Networking, it's that flattening of the, of the, of the network as we've talked about. Lots of east-west traffic, low latency, high bandwidth, scale out architectures, and that's where Force 10 fits well into that piece. So Dell still, as uh, Dario said, a lot of white space, and there's probably going to be some more acquisitions to help flash out the portfolio. They need to partner with a lot of companies to have a full security environment too, in the layer four through seven. They're starting to go out with their SonicWall acquisition, uh, but th there's still lots of pieces. Dell doesn't have you know, nearly as broad of a portfolio as an IBM or an HP uh, when, it, when it comes to the, the full stack, but uh, they, they've got the major pieces here. They've got the buildings blocks. They've got a you know solid start to their convergence strategy, and uh, you know looking forward to seeing some some of the announcements this week that we think are going to push the ball forward a little. You know, I meant to ask uh, Dario when he's on. And we ran out of time, but maybe I'll ask you. So, if you look at the networking business, Cisco's got a dominant share of networking. If you look at the Gartner Magic Quadrant for networking, you know, there's really Cisco and HP are really the only two in the upper right. So it's it's amazing that. Um, that in networking, Cisco has, has been able to garner such a dominant share. In storage, that doesn't happen. I mean, you used to work with EMC, I don't know what EMC's worldwide share is, probably 30%, right? Yeah, right. Maybe 35, but so, you haven't seen that type of domination in other markets. Servers, same thing, you know, it's a very fragmented market. Why is it in networking that Cisco was able to garnish so high a share, and is that sustainable with guys like Dell coming in and, and, and IBM, you know, with the BNT acquisition, and and others. Yeah, so, so great question, Dave. And you know, Cisco really rode that wave of Ethernet. So you know, standards are great, and we want to have everything interoperate. But um, at, at the end of the day, it, it, it's a lot easier if I have a single network uh, and, and I manage thing up. Cisco helped build an army of Cisco certified engineers and network designers um, that basically became their sales force. So strong channel presence, um, built a whole economy of new 
uh, jobs around their products. Um, we've seen that in the, in the VMware environments. Uh, VMware has, you know, the VMware user groups and they have VMware certified people, they have evangelists. Heck, you know, I'm, I'm a VMware V expert and I, you know, love virtualization. So building that whole ecosystem from the channel, from the customer, and building jobs around this. You know, the, the job of the future isn't just, you know, a storage administrator that provisions LUNs. You know, a VMware virtualization administrator has to be cross-functional and do a lot of things. Uh, and nobody has had that next generation networking job to displace Cisco yet, even though we think with SDN coming in software-defined networks, there, there might be that, that opportunity. That opening, yeah. The, yeah, now Cisco's recently done a spin out uh, called NCME uh, that's expected to be their play for software-defined networks, but you know it, it's early and those spin-outs take two or three years to kind of come to fruition, and in the meantime, there's a little bit of space for the other networking guys to try to get there. But you know, it, it's tough to you know beat the 800-pound gorilla. You know, Intel's still dominant on the chipset, despite there being lots of server vendors. Uh, you know, storage is very fragmented, and you know, Cisco, you know, it, it, they've still got some legs to stand on. You know, Stu, um, the other thing we've been hearing a lot about uh, is integration. And actually, it's, it's, Dell doesn't make a huge deal out of it. It's just an observation that, that I made and we've been making is that it seems like Dell um, prioritizes integration of its acquisitions more so than some other companies. I mean, you used to work at, at EMC, a very acquisitive company. And I always felt like EMC was more concerned about the performance of the asset than they were integrating that asset. Now that may be changing a little bit, but with Dell, it seems to be a in very intense focus on integration. I wonder if I could get your take on, on, on both Dell's you know, integration and my, my statements yeah. about the EMC. No, no, absolutely, Dave, and, and something really interesting to look at, because if you look, there are some pieces that you want to fold in and hold tight. From an EMC standpoint, if you look at some of the bigger acquisitions, like RSA or like VMware, they're, needs to be integration, but they wanted to let those businesses run on their own. And I think, you know, we talked about VMware being just one of the, the best acquisitions of all time, and one of the best things that EMC did is they kept their own buildings, they kept their own people, um, and they really stayed at arm length and eventually spun out as an IPO. RSA, in a lot of ways, is still that independent, uh, excuse me, security company, uh, you know, so people don't think of it's an EMC company, it, it's, it's RSA, they have a great ecosystem built around them. Uh, Dell's a smaller company, these are smaller acquisitions, and they, they are more core to the, the, their intellectual property. Well, it's not a smaller company though, it's a three times the size Okay, from, from a storage standpoint, you know, if I think on, on EMC standpoint. It's a clean sheet of paper Yeah, clean, clean sheet of paper uh, from storage. If you look at EMC, you know, an Avamar and a data domain, you know, EMC has their backup and recovery group, and they kind of bundle all those together. Uh, from Dell, they're taking the Exanet piece uh, and, there's, and the Oak Arena technology, and they're spreading that through the Power Vault, the Equalogic, and the Compellent uh, technology. So it, it's and maybe maybe times have changed. Well, now, so first of all, I should clarify. So EMC has obviously done a great job of integrating with VMware, yes. um, and has probably had a leadership position there, so it's done that very well, but in terms of taking assets that it acquires and integrating now, well, I mean, for instance. You know, an example, just to give you a counterpoint on that, EMC bought the Kasha acquisition, it was an Israeli-based CDP, CRR, and that's RecoverPoint, which is heavily integrated into, uh, as the, the replication product for the VNX platform, and it also supports the VMAX now. So, you know, there's pieces, but, you know, Yeah, EMC's but I could argue, Stu, that, that that has opportunity to be integrated into its, its, its uh, BRS portfolio in a bigger way. Um, so it's so that's what I'm saying. It's for to me, it's mixed. Whereas, and maybe it's just per my perception. But with Dell, I see a very intense focus on integration. And, and we asked uh, one of our guests that there might have been uh, Travis Vigil. You know, why is that? And he said that basically the, s the small and mid-sized customers actually need it more because they don't have the resources to do integration on their own. Now, so I wonder as as well if if the the times they are changing in that regard too, uh, with open APIs and open source and you know, new software methodologies if integration is somewhat easier today than it has been in the last 10 or 15 years. But that seems to me to be something that is, uh, bears watching here. I mean, look at NetApp. You know, the NetApp integration of Spinnaker has taken a long, long time. Um, you know, we're still seeing the f the, that labor of love play itself out. It's unclear to me what's going on with, with, with Bycast. I think that's an asset there. I want to hear more next week at the NetApp Analyst event. Um, so, and I think NetApp's learning how to do that. My sense is that, that, that Dell was very, very aggressive about doing that. Now maybe it's, 
acquired certain assets that are easier to integrate, yeah, but I, I don't mean, think Dave, so. Dave, I think a lot of these, if you, the, most of the acquisitions you're talking about from Dell are software components that become features inside well, of the storage What about Compelon and Equalogic? I mean, yeah. you know. Well, they're, they're two separate product lines. Sure, that's true. And, and I guess Exonet is the sort of glue that's holding those guys together, and that is taking a while, in, in fairness. So, um, but, but it just seems to be an emphasis on it, uh, whereas, I think a lot of other companies are defensive about integration. Oh, we'll get there, we'll get there, we'll get there. As opposed to Dell, is no, we're, that is our main thrust of our, of our investment in R&D strategy. Now maybe that's because they don't have, you know, they're not in, inventing a lot of stuff in Dell Labs, right? Right. Like HP Labs or, you know, IBM, you know, research, research. centers. Um, although EMCs, you know, they do a lot of R&D, but a lot of their internal R&D is on new product features. So, um, I just, you know, it's something that was worth watching. It may be just a misperception on my part, but I see Dell as more aggressive on integration than some of its counterparts. Okay, so we're here, at Dell Storage Forum, we're live. Uh, this is Dave Vellante, I'm here with Stu Miniman. Stu, any closing thoughts? So, uh, excited for the 4.30 announcement. Uh, we have some more stuff we're going to be able to talk about tomorrow. Uh, good buzz, nice to be here at the hometown in, in Boston after so many weeks in Vegas, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well it is great to be in Boston, and of course we couldn't be here without the generous support of Dell. Uh, we really appreciate you know, Dell bringing us here, and of course Legal Seafood, you know, my favorite hangout. I mean, I know you like legals. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, Mark, Mike, and I went to Legal Test Kitchen last night and had a great meal, so. Yeah, so, um, yeah, right across the street, the new Harbor Side, you should check it out. Um, legals, we got some great gifts here for some of our guests. You know, a lot of people don't know, Stu, Legals has a, uh, they ship anywhere in the U.S. Right, you go to shop.legalseafood.com. You know, they got you know, great clam bakes and they ship all over the United States, so definitely check that out. I when I go to Legals, I love to get a grilled piece of fish over salad. That's what I get. You know, yeah, yeah I had a nice, nice piece clean. of salmon last night. <laughs> Good. <laughs> all right, so check that out. Thank you to Legal Seafoods. All right, so keep it right there. We've got uh, some segments coming up. Um, Phil Soren actually is coming up with a, a, a segment that we did last year at the Dell Storage Forum. So, so watch for that. Keep it right there, and we will be back with more coverage from the Dell Storage Forum. This is the Cube. We'll be back. <laughs>